We are having a wonderful morning. So unfortunately, we didn't find much more on our hyenas, but we have found a big lizard. And you can see it's just sitting, enjoying the morning sunshine and warming itself up so that it can start getting moving and going and get to try and find some food. So it is a rather large monitor lizard. It's a water monitor. And we get two different species here. We get these water monitors and the rock monitors. Now the water monitor is easy to identify. Other than the fact that it's near water, it's also got these sort of yellowy green hues in the, in the body. And then they have that long pointy nose. Whereas the rock monitor is a more gray color with that big rounded blunted head. Now this guy, let's see if his tongue will come out because it will be a really cool shot if his tongue does come out. You can see his little spider web in the background there as well. But uh, hopefully you will be able to see that forked tongue coming out and tasting the air. You can also see the ears and the eyes. And this is a really sort of unusual for us because we don't typically get this close to them right out in the open. Generally they scurry for some sort of vegetation. And so to be able to actually see him out in the open like this is really, really cool. There we go. Where's the tongue? Come on, stick your tongue out. Now they'll use that tongue just to be aware of their environment. So they taste the air and they kind of will put it out to be able to see what's around them. In this situation, he can actually see us. So we don't have to worry too much with the tongue. They can be able to use the ears to hear me and the eyes to see me because of the proximity that we're at. That monitor lizard is probably, I would say, no more than 10 meters from where we are. And it's just giving us the beady eye. And I think the reason why it's sitting there and not moving is because it doesn't really have many places to go. We're on top of the dam wall and there's only the water behind it, which it could potentially go into. But given that it's still quite cool this morning, I would imagine the water itself is quite cold. And so rather than doing that, might as well just use his camouflage. And look at how well they actually do camouflage. Can you imagine if that head was down and it was just sitting dead still? And become quite difficult for us to actually see that monitor lizard but luckily its head is up which made life a little bit easier now you can see look at the size of those feet as well what people don't often realize with these monitor lizards is just how bulky their legs and feet are it almost looks like a dragon's foot doesn't it it's really big and thick lots of muscles there and then those big long claws that it uses to help grip its terrain when it's climbing remember these are really good climbers They'll be able to go up trees and up these sort of steep banks that are slippery sometimes with mud. And those claws all just provide the traction to be able to get up there. But that is a very, very cool visual. It's not going to get much better than that for a massive lizard like this. Now you can see the body kind of goes backwards and then there is a massive tail as well. There's the back legs. And then look at the thickness of the tail. M huge amounts of muscles there that are able to propel this lizard as well as to defend it so not only will they use that long muscular tail to be able to swim with you can see it still goes around the corner there that's quite big um, they'll use that to be able to swim and propel themselves in water but if they are attacked by something they'll also whip with that tail and you can imagine with a long thin end how sore it must be if it actually hits you and so they'll try and defend themselves with that long whip like tail from time to time they also have the most incredible bite on them, serious force when they bite down. And so you don't want to be on the wrong end of one of these guys. So Michael, you're wondering if the rock and water monitor ever interbreed. Well, not as far as I know. I've never seen anything that suggests that they do and I've never seen anyone or any particular individual that resembles either one. So as far as I know, no, they don't. Um, nature is quite clever in that way that they often um, will kind of inhabit different areas and they know that one is not of the same species and the only time we see interbreeding amongst animals is generally when people have forced it by putting them together in the same area or actually s using their genetics in a lab to make a cross species but out here no you won't see that and I certainly never have I don't think James or Jamie would either no. What's going on? What are, you, are you alert to us? I think it wants to move, but it's kind of trying to use that tactic of staying dead still in order for us not to notice that it's there. 